Have you ever almost died? Yes, I heard it. Yes. Wow, there are a lot of people. Well, I have. I was at a point in my life where I thought that I saw life flash before my eyes. I was in the United States to study abroad, and my sister was driving, and our car just slipped down a hill five times. At that moment, I felt like my life was over. I thought I was in heaven until I saw my sister, and I'm like, oh wait, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, the helicopter came for me, and medics came and rushed me into uh, the ER to try to take me out of the car and rush me into the ER. I was admitted into the hospital with glass shards stuck on my head, a bruised and ruptured lung a broken collarbone, and a spinal cord injury, resulting in me having to breathe through a ventilator for a while. And I, my whole body was paralyzed. And for the life of me, I never would have thought that at some point a 16-year-old girl would have to learn how to breathe again on her own. I never thought about how a 16-year-old girl would have to learn how to sit up. And for the first time ever in my life, I actually understood what baby steps actually meant. Until the next time that I die, I will always say that I'm forever grateful that this has happened to me. I was given the chance to go through life, and I was given the chance to go through such an extreme event such massive feelings that it had shaped me into the person that I am today. And it had made me realize, we don't get to live a life for very long, and only dead fish go with the flow. I am always the one to go against the flow. I understand that we all have our own battles to fight. I battle with death, but you might be battling with depression a chronic disease, or something, whether it's a emotional pain or physical pain, or just a mental health issue, these are all valid battles. And I understand we have more than just one battle to fight for. So, my question to you guys would be, if you don't start taking control of your own life now, when are you ever going to do it? The power of being able to take control of your own life is just incredible. You'd always know what to say, always know what you want, and you always know how to act in different situations. And we hear this all the time. Speak up. Be the difference you want to see in the world. Get, be proactive. But what does that even mean? I had to Google just to make sure that I understand what that actually means. Being proactive is acting in anticipation of future problems, needs, or changes. Imagine being proactive as packing your own bag and you're going on an adventure tomorrow. If you go on an adventure tomorrow knowing exactly what you have in your bag, you're capable of handling anything that comes your way. Who needs to be proactive and why? I think that all people of all genders, in all age, of all ages, and in all circumstances, should be proactive. Don't wait until you're unhealthy to start going to the doctor. Don't wait until your boss wants to fire you to start making changes in your work. And don't wait until your kid is pregnant to start talking about the birds and the bees talk because she needed that way before. I usually think in three steps before I do anything. Last night, true story, last night, 
as I was revising my speech for TED Talk today, guess how I felt? I thought it was terrible. So at night, I decided I wanted to rewrite this whole thing. That was me being proactive at the wrong time. And I thought, it's a good idea to rewrite my whole speech less than 24 hours before. Um, that was me evaluating the situation. I understood what I was dealing with. I understood my capability and I assessed what was going on at the situation. Next step, consider the outcomes. I thought about rewriting it, but the second voice came and talked to me and she said, why are you making your life so miserable? Why did you have to rewrite it? Do you actually have to? Is it necessary? And my answer was, yes. Because I thought of you and you and you. And I didn't want to give uh, not a well presentation of what I was trying to say. You guys are what kept me going. Even if I had to pull an all-nighter, I don't care. And I had to do it. And that's me considering the possible outcomes. Is it worth it? Do we need to do it? Last step, just do it. So I rewrite the whole thing. And whatever you're hearing today was written at 10 p.m. last night. Oh, thank you. Under the approval of TEDx back out team, but oh, of course. Don't, please don't come for them. They know, they know about this. Um, and I know it could be exhausting sometimes. I know, because I'm on my fifth coffee of the day and I had two hours of sleep for this. What I'm trying to say is that it won't feel right all the time and that is okay. My sister started out majoring in psychology and then she decided to drop out. And then she decided she wanted to do, uh, she wanted to major in hospitality. And then she decided to drop out again. And now she's getting her doctorate in nursing. Now nursing feels like it's her calling, but who knows, maybe tonight she'll give me a call and say, hey, I decided to drop out of nursing and I'm just gonna make animal balloons at kids' party for a living. You never know. <laughs> Um, the reason why I'm telling you this is because I think that it's completely okay to think that you know what you want and then sometimes life doesn't turn out the way you expect it to be. But, because we are young, right? And the sooner you take action, the sooner you will fail, the closer you are to reaching your goal in life and your main purpose. And I think that's a, that's a good thing. Being proactive is an act of self-love. And just like anything else in life, you will wake up to your off days and you feel like you don't want to do it anymore. You just want to let go. You don't love yourself today. You don't want to be proactive today. And when that happens, please give yourself a break. Respect yourself and Take some time off to heal internally, recharge, and then come back when you're ready. Don't try too hard to fake it till you make it, because faking it could be exhausting. And we live in a culture where faking it until you make it is a very typical mindset, a very typical concept. Being able to follow your dream is also an act of proactivity. You love yourself enough to know what you want. I can't become a surgeon because I can't even use my hands properly. I can't become, I can't work in an office with other human beings from nine to five. Kudos to all the ones who can because it hats off to you. Yeah, so I think following your dream is an act of proactivity. My parents are the golden couple of the industry. My mom is a singer, and my dad is a drummer. 
and they're here today. <laughs> And despite me being associated with music my entire life, uh, or coming from a, a musical family, I was never encouraged to pursue music because they knew the industry too well and they could foresee all the hardships that I might run into. So I decided that I would major in business management. And then I decided again that I, I want to become an artist full-time. So after I graduated with my bachelor degree in business management, I decided to stop. And now, I'm a singer. Uh, <laughs> you guys are so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> but I did it. I took control of my own life. And I know that especially in this Viet culture, in this Asian culture. Dropping business to make music is not very ideal. To some people, they might think that it's a failure, but is it a fail to me? Absolutely not. It shaped me and I became the person I am today, thanks to music. And as a proud Vietnamese Gen Z artist, my job and my obligation is to bring out life stories through the artistic lens, turning them into melody, representing what I stand for, in hopes that maybe I could heal or could inspire someone with my music. Now, the lack of people's belief in you, it could be from other people, it could be from yourself. You, sometimes you would believe in yourself. And that could weigh you down and stops you from being proactive, and stops you from doing what you think is right for you. I've always loved the idea of being able to write music, but for some reason I never, I always thought that I could, I could not write music. And the song that I re recently came out with is, that was me being proactive and I said, I have to stop saying that I can't write music. Of course, when I released this song, I was very shy, I was very nervous, and I was afraid of all the judgment that I might get, because I'm not a good writer, I'm not a good composer. But I did it anyway, because I think that release, being able to release this was a way of me telling myself that I did it, and it's a reward for me. And I stopped caring about all the judgments. I feel like when you're in your 20s, you're so afraid of judgment, but why? Let it be the inspiration. Let it inspire you. Let it motivate you to do better in life because life is so beautiful. And you may be in your 20s thinking that, oh, I have a long way to go. But no, think about your own battles and think about how much time you have left. Now you said, I won't be able to write music, so I wrote music. You said that I'm forever just going to be the daughter of my parents. You only refer to me as that, and you would never call me by my own name. So I'm here to prove to you that I am worthy as an individual artist, and I'm more than just somebody's daughter. Don't be afraid of failure, even when you think that you're losing too much. Uh, eventually, your losses will be your gains, and that is going to happen without you even knowing. So, explore, find what you want, find what you like, find your purpose in life, pack your own bag, be proactive, always have something in your pocket, and the closer you are to failing. I think that failing is never, it's never a thing. If you don't think that it, it is a fail. If it's a fail and you took a lesson out of it and you turn it into something that is, could be useful for your life and your purpose, I don't think that it's a fail. You win some, you lose some, and that is completely okay because that's what life is all about. Again, 
My name is Sisi Jun. I am no pair of sneakers, but I'm here to tell you, just do it. Thank you.